The Yorkshire Dales is the scene this early morning for one of the British Isles great wildlife spectacles, the black grouse lek, a turf war that decides which black cocks get the grey hens. And I'm with a grouse shooter who champions this bird. Can you, can you hear him lacking in there? Yeah, can you hear something? Yeah, that, that's a black grouse displaying to a grey hen. Finally it happens, three birds facing off on tarmac. Okay, we've crept up behind the wall and the lek is just over the wall here and this is what it's all about. Usually leks are on heather heavy moors but this one in 2020 is different, it's in the middle of a road. Well, we've got some black grouse just over the rise and they're lekking which is males together displaying and they're on the road because the road is so quiet because of coronavirus that it's a really nice flat area for them to, for, for them to display on and so that's what they're doing. Yeah, black grouse are funny birds. The grey hens, the females, will disperse a long way looking for males, but the males don't go very far. So you can have areas of good population growth, but they don't spread out. When a small number were let out in the south, in this area, they didn't just sort of lek immediately. At, at low densities, they flew a long way looking for females. But as the density rises, suddenly they're starting to form these clusters and leks and the females are coming to those leks and this is I, I thought it was going to happen this year and it has and we have our first lek this year so they bred on here but the original males to get it going came from the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust uh, where they relocated black grouse from the north from the North Pennines into the southern dales to uh, re-establish the population of black grouse on site Unlike anti-grouse shooting campaigners, when it comes to the hard graft of conservation work, James is more action than talk. He's putting in the hours to improve the bird's conservation status. The grouse relocation programme is just part of a larger effort by James to rejuvenate the moors. It's all about habitat. Uh, and last year, on the uh, thousand metres of road that way, we had three broods. One had a two one had an eight and one had a nine. So there is absolutely no problems with them breeding with good numbers if the habitat's right. Looking at this uh, piece of bank here, I can see that we've got the primroses, we've got meadow vetchling coming there, or maybe horseshoe vetch. We've got a, a little potion tiller. We've got, I think it is, uh, we've got meadow sweet. Uh, we've got plantains. So we've got a wide range of flowering plants here and they will, they will support the insects that the birds that the uh, the chicks need but we only get this through farming it in the proper way and the way we farm it is with cattle a mix of cattle and sheep in the right proportions a, a sheep has a very similar diet to a game bird in that they want a, a small amount of the very best stuff Cattle are different in, in that they're a volume feeder, so they take, they're not too worried, they've got a very big mouth so they can't pick very much anyway, so they can get away with a lot of poor quality forage. Uh, uh, and what that means is that every plant gets a go. He's correcting decades old bad government policy that led to flooding in places like York. If a river up here is pushing the water off as quickly as possible, York floods. We, we are trying to do some work to improve it and to hold the water up. Uh, after the war, there was a big push uh, to increase food production. And as part of that, the government encouraged farmers to drain the moors with moorland grips. Uh, this, this certainly got rid of the water a lot quicker, uh, but it did lots of damage to the river. Top of the list is filling in grips. James is passionate about moor management understanding completely that whatever happens on his land affects everyone downstream. His work, helped this year by the coronavirus lockdown, is already helping black grouse. You can read more about James and his moorland management in the GWCT's publication, Moorland Conservationists. Click on the link in the description to download it.